Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, flying solo. So this is after James Wiseman's first summer league game ever. He, of course, didn't have a summer league before his rookie year, and he was injured after his rookie year. So he had no summer league at all. This was first time. First time he's played a game since a couple of G League games back in March. And I got to tell you, man, I'd been wanting to see Wiseman and Jonathan Kaminga on the same court together at the same time for so long. And it was just satisfying to see them lined up at tip and good call by uh, Jama Malahela. Malahela. I'm going to get that name right. But um, it was a good call by him to set up the first play, which was, uh, you know, a pick and a dive by James Wiseman. And Kaminga lofted it up for the lob. And Wiseman just went up above everybody, snagged it, and threw it down with force. And it was like this relief, you know, just like to get that out of the way. And it's crazy because like you see those two guys on the court at the same time, and you just see how much athleticism, how much physical potential, and just what kind of specimens they are. And we've known over the years that the Warriors haven't had those things. And I've talked about that in the past. And to know that if they're healthy and if they develop, that they can be such a critical part of the Warriors next season and into the future, it's just a nice little snippet, you know, because Kaminga, right? He was like a top five prospect in the 2021 class. And a lot of people had said that everybody in the top five, which was Kate Cunningham, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, Jalen Suggs, and John Kaminga, any of those guys could have gone first in the James Wiseman, Anthony Edwards draft, you know? So just to have these two basically like blue chip athletic freaks out there, it's just enticing. It's a summer league game. Everybody's rusty. Everybody's working on things. And the Warriors ultimately won. And it's funny because they won. It was tied. Kaminga got fouled and he hit the first free throw and then he missed the second one and the Spurs came down and coughed it up. And that's how it ended, which is a very, very, very fitting way to end a summer league game, especially kind of a a sloppy one, you know what I mean? But Wiseman first, okay, he looks good out there. He looked fluid, he looked fast, and he looked strong, right? He came into the league about 240. I think they were saying he was like 255, 258. So that's that's a big deal that he can still, I mean, he still runs like a gazelle out there. One thing that I loved about him before he got drafted was seeing highlights of him like running as if he were 6'6", right? He wasn't running like a plodding center. He wasn't like upright. He wasn't stiff. He was, he has long legs and he just ran as if he was a smaller dude. And that's just a taste of what he can actually do. So he still has that. And he had two nice blocks, great timing on those. And overall on defense, which is a big part of how he'll stay on the court next season. He looked better, you know? He looked more like he was moving better, like he knew his assignments a little bit better. He was kind of just covering and playing weak side stuff and giving help and all that other jazz. He was a lot better with his rotations on the defensive end and that's really really promising because when you're out for that long, obviously there's the physical side, but of course there's the mental side, especially for a guy who hasn't played in such a long time and only played 39 games his rookie year, had no summer league before that, and only played three games at Memphis in college. So that's a big deal. Good, good start for him. And after the lob, he hit a nice three. He had the ball and he just faced up and put it up and it rattled in. So that was good. And he had a couple other shots. He was five for seven. I would have loved to have seen him shoot more. I would love to have seen guys feed him the ball in the low post or look for him more in lobs. Granted, the Spurs were trying to take that away. But his shots, you know, he shot a couple mid-rangers. He had to turn around 
fadeaway two point shot. And I was like, okay, he's got that. He's got that. And then he had another face up mid ranger. So that's solid. He has that touch. And, uh, you know, it had been reported that his offensive touch looks pretty good still. That's good. And obviously he's getting his rhythm and timing back. And, you know, I'd watched his G League games before he got shut down because of a, uh, a complication with his right knee from the meniscus. But, he looked way better here. A lot of it, of course, is due to the fact that it's better competition. He has better teammates and just the environment of summer league where it's a place to be seen. And you have like all the big name coaches, big name players, celebrities, all that stuff showing up, you know, whereas like in the G league, you get like 20 people in the stands. So he was definitely more active and amped up for that. And, you know, people were feeding him the ball a little bit better early on. And then you could tell he was getting frustrated that he wasn't getting the ball so much in the second half, but it's okay. It's okay. You know, another thing is like, you really, really forget how huge he is out there. Right. I mean, we're so used to seeing Kavon Looney as our center getting, you know, bodied by other guys, but you know, as good as Looney is, he's only six, nine, right. And Robert Williams was bigger than him, but then, but uh, James Wiseman is bigger than both Robert Williams and Al Horford, you know? So that's just uh, a nice <laughs> reminder of who he can be and what he can do out there. He did have seven fouls. Some of those were maybe a little ticky tack, but it's summer league and he'll need to work those out a little bit. He's going into his third year, but he will still probably get uh, rookie calls against him especially if he is, you know, reaching or slow or whatever. But he did a good job on defense being straight up, right? When he was coming on help and if somebody beat their man and got to the rim, he wouldn't try to reach over them. He would just go straight up. And I remember that from his rookie year, people, people telling him that, hey, you are seven one. just put your arms straight up and people will not be able to shoot over you. Don't go for like crazy blocks, don't go for pump fakes, don't dive in, don't put your hand over them, anything like that. So that was good. That was something that I feel like he's definitely worked on and that's a positive. He only had a couple rebounds and that was something from before that he needed to work on. Just his first game, so kind of give him a pass, but you know, he had trouble rebounding a little bit in the G League stint. So hopefully this is something he can start showing if he plays a couple more games in the Summer League. And, you know, one thing that looked good was his hands. I've always thought he had soft hands, but he was just a little jittery his rookie year. But if people were saying he has bad hands, bad hands, but none of that was there today. You know, he caught passes that were thrown to him. There was that... Uh, tight pass that Kaminga threw to him in the fourth quarter, I think, where Kaminga drove, was kind of probing the defense a little bit and found Wiseman under the basket and kind of threw like a bit of a laser pass right into his you know, chest. And Wiseman caught it, went straight up for the dunk. So that's good. You know, everybody complained about those hands before. So I don't recall once in this game or in this broadcast where it was brought up. And yeah, bottom line, he sounded like he was happy and healthy afterwards. He said his knee felt great and that was the most important thing. When he came back halfway through the fourth or towards the end of the fourth, I was like, okay, <laughs> hopefully this is a good thing and that he doesn't like overly, overly work that knee. So we'll see about that. But, you know, fingers crossed, it seems like everything is is fine and it's exciting. You know, it really is because I've been a huge James Wiseman fan, Stan, whatever you want to call it, since 2020, since the Warriors were trying to figure out during that extended uh, break, I guess, uh, between, well, between March 2020 and the actual draft in November 2020. And, you know, as much as I liked Edwards and could have talked myself into LaMelo Ball, I, I liked Wiseman, you know, so... You know, I've always felt that if he's healthy, he has the ability to to do some things out there and take the long view, right? He doesn't need to come in next season and average 25 points a game or have like 15 boards a game or anything like that. 
would be amazing, but that's not what they, they really need. You know, if you think back into the playoffs and the finals, they need a big body, play defense, rebound, be that lob threat and just force teams to guard the Warriors in a different way so that the Warriors get even more wide open shots from the perimeter, right? Like imagine guys guarding Steph and then having to come down low and guard Wiseman. I mean, as much as everybody else benefited from Steph's gravity with this improved team compared to the one that Wiseman played with his rookie season, I mean, that makes me wish the the regular season was just around the corner. Uh, Jonathan Kaminga, he had a rough shooting night, but I don't really care. Uh, obviously, that guy is supremely talented. And I liked that there's a mandate for him to try other stuff in the summer league. Who cares what he shoots right now? It's a question of you know getting those reps, seeing those pictures as obviously – they're trying to get him on ball more. He had the ball in his hands. He was running point. He was running breaks. And that's what you want to see. This is the time to test that stuff out. They know what he can do. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he will work on the things that he does well. But, you know, playing point, the dribble drives, the drive and kicks. Um, he was more vocal. He had the step back three off the bounce. He had a mid-range pull up. All these things that you want to see, all these different wrinkles in his game. And especially with more responsibility, with Otto Porter Jr. gone to Toronto, with Gary Payton II gone to Portland, Kaminga is going to have a bigger role, you know, and he needs to prepare and be ready for that and needs to show Steve Kerr and the rest of the coaches who weren't in attendance for this game. he needs to show them what he can do. And I think I think that he did a, a decent job. He was terrible from the free throw line. He hit one to win the game, right? But you know, everybody's going to say he, he sucks at the line. But we've seen this, and I've talked about this. His stroke is not bad. It's much more improved from when he first got drafted, and it was never broken. And he had games where he hit like eight of nine from the line during the regular season. So I'm not worried about that. It may be he reverted to bad habits. Maybe his timing's off. Maybe he's just a little bit in his head. I mean, that's the thing I worry about the most because free throws is pretty much <laughs> about stuff in your head. So hopefully that shakes out. But in general, I'm I'm not worried about him. What I loved seeing was his fire, his competitiveness, he, you know, <laughs> clapped back at the refs a few times, times, and he, you know, was arguing for calls a little bit. Hopefully, it doesn't get to the point of whining for calls and complaining nonstop after every non-call. But I like that he was going at Josh Primo, the Spurs' second-year player, who was the youngest player in the league last season, I think. And you know, seeing Kaminga go at him. You know, you know he's not afraid, and you know, you saw it during the regular season that he was that competitive. But it's it's cool to see him vocal, and you know, it's funny because after a year of being in the league, you're starting to see Kaminga's personality and Moses Moody's personality come out a little bit. You know, they're not just these wide eyed kids. You're seeing like how they approach the game and how they approach playing in games. So you know, I find that really really interesting. Kaminga, he he wants to win, and I have always loved that about him, and it's cool to see that come out of him with the emotions. Maybe he's taken after Draymond, and hopefully he doesn't take after him a little too much with the emotions and the and the shouting at the refs and everything, but you know, like he's trying stuff out. So for anybody out there who's like worried about Jonathan Kaminga, don't worry about Jonathan Kaminga, right? He wants to be great, he's very competitive. And, you know, this is when he gets to do those things that he didn't get to do during the regular season. You know, things that maybe he kind of tried in the G League last year. But now it's like you go into the summer and it's like the coaching staff, the front office wants you to work on this. You know, like this is how you improve your game. This is how you become an all-star player, like follow this path. So playing defense, picking up Josh Primo, who was the Spurs' best player. and having the ball in your hands and learning to make 
good decisions, quick decisions, learning to get past people. I mean, one thing's for sure, uh, Kaminga's flop game was was pretty strong because every time he kind of got caught up in the in the paint, he would like fall to the ground. So, uh, you know, I say that jokingly, but he's he's figuring out his game and it's evolving. So it's kind of a joy to see what he's doing now and imagining him getting better at those things, right? Like him being kind of a point forward in a lot of ways, the way that Andre has been, the way that Draymond has been. So don't worry about his stat line. He scored well. Sure. He shot badly from the free throw line. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. That'll get worked out eventually. The action never ends at DraftKings Sportsbook, especially this summer. With tons of ways to bet on all your favorite sports, you can fuel your fandom and feel the heat of the season like never before. Plus, right now, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving new customers a risk-free bet up to $1,000. That's right. Make your first bet up to $1,000, and if it doesn't win, you'll get another shot to cash in. You can throw down on all the major actions for baseball, golf, MMA, and more. Plus, with same-game parlays, spreads, money lines, over-unders, and props, your betting options feel endless. I'm looking forward to all those Giants-Dodgers matchups because it's just one of the best rivalries in sports. So we'll see what the odds are for those. Best of all, DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. You can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TBPN. Make your first deposit and get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. That's promo code TBPN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. A couple other things. Uh, Kundari Weatherspoon. I think... He's another guy. I've talked about this. I talked about this on the last episode when people were freaking out about losing Gary Payton the second. I love Gary Payton the second, but again, if you sign him for three years and you match that deal, you're paying him when he's 33. So you have other guys who can play defense by the time the playoffs roll around. And if you have to play John Morant, if you have to play, uh, I don't know if Kyrie Irving ends up on the Lakers. I don't know. But if you have to play some of these point guards that you have to guard at the point of attack, then you have some other options, right? I said in the last episode, you have Wiggins, you have Clay. uh, Now you have Dante DiVincenzo. You have Moses Moody, who looks, I mean, I'll get to him in a second, but he looks like he is just focused on improving and being somebody that the Warriors can put in the game and depend on. But they have all those guys. They have, eventually they might have Rollins, you know, Ryan Rollins, if he heals up and can get some playing time towards the middle of the season or something, some garbage time, and maybe even Andre if they get him back, right? But Weatherspoon, he's another dude that could make his living as a defensive pest. Same size as Gary Payton the, the second, you know? Six three, but if the way he finds his way onto a team is to just be in a point guard's face, sure, maybe he can do that too. So what I'm saying is, as much as I love Gary Payton the second, you're already seeing guys who could potentially step up into that role. Now I'm not saying they will do what GP two did last season, but everyone that was freaking out, it's like teams change, teams evolve, teams are never exactly the same, you know. And just because one person did it a certain way and did it well, doesn't mean that these young, talented dudes cannot (laughs) improve. You know what I mean? Like everybody just is a prisoner of the moment all the time. And they just see like, oh, Gary Payton the second, we needed him. We don't win the title. Yeah, probably, probably. But if you fast forward and you get reps for all these younger guys and you plug in uh, Dante DiVincenzo and a healthier clay who's going to be better next season because he has a whole season off to get his body right, get his mind right, all that stuff. And a Wiggins who's more focused, then you have options. So everybody freaking out about Gary Payton the second. Yes, it's a bummer, but <laughs> this is the NBA. This is how it works. Some quick thoughts on Moses Moody. He didn't play in this one. He said he had a medical issue during a interview on TV. But, you know, one thing I noticed from the previous game when he scored 34 points in like 27 minutes was 
he has always been known to be a smart, mature player, someone who maybe has a lower ceiling than a Jonathan Kaminga, but is more ready to play right away. And he just has a very solid nature to his game. And to be honest, like he has this maturity and honestly, this leadership quality to him, this vibe to him that reminds me a little bit of Andre Guadalla, at least right now in summer league, right? He just has this confidence and I can't wait to see what he does next season. I'm hoping, and I talked about this before, that he gets a little bit more foot speed so we can guard some smaller players and quicker guards. But he's definitely going to be somebody that gets some minutes, you know, that can fill in for missing Gary Payton the second, fill in for Otto Porter Jr.'s minutes, all those guys, right? And Kaminga as well. So those are all positives. And it's crazy to me because like Kaminga, Moody, and Wiseman, I mean, that's an amazing young group of guys. And then you throw in a couple quote unquote older dudes like Jordan Poole, who's what, 22 going on 23. And then Wiggins, who's in his late twenties. And then you throw in these younger guys, Rollins and Patrick Baldwin Jr. And it's like, okay, these are some definite, definite pieces. Not even talking about the hall of famers at the top of the top of the roster. Right. So again, the Warriors are looking good. There are many reasons to be happy. And I know that a lot of Warriors fans and Warriors Twitter and Warriors chatter is about this strange vibe of disappointment in the Warriors front office, which I addressed in the last episode, but is still lingering. People who have these knee jerk reactions and don't see the bigger picture, don't see the long view. And I'm not even talking about a really long view. I'm talking about like the medium view, you know? You can't just judge one move without seeing what it's going to end up being. Yes, you can go off on Twitter and whine about things. Sure, right? You know, if you're basically a clout chaser and just trying to, you know, get followers and and rile up other fans and whatever who feel the same way, but you know, in the long run, this is a team that knows what it's doing. And I look forward to seeing the roster that they put together. You know, I mean, this is how you build a team. And if you don't recall how teams were built before Joel Acob, before Steph Curry, then you are a very lucky Warriors fan. Last thing is Mac McClung. Man, I really like that kid. I I don't know. I mean, I wish. I think he's like listed as 6'2". He looks more like 6'1", six, six maybe 6 feet. But I wish he was like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, because he's he's fun, you know? I remember seeing him several years ago on YouTube. He was like a viral sensation just doing these crazy like 360 windmill dunks, all this stuff. And, you know, he played at Georgetown, which I was really impressed that he played at Georgetown and then he transferred to Texas tech and then went to the pros. I don't know if the warriors are the team, you know, like they probably won't use a two way on him, but if they do, I wouldn't be disappointed. You know, I was texting my buddy Aram in Toronto. And if you don't know, I was a big Nico Mannion fan. I predicted that pick in the 2020 draft and I was texting Aram and I was like, is Mac better than Nico Mannion? <laughs> Jokingly, uh, because I think he is. And he's like, oh, definitely, definitely, you know? So, you know, hopefully Mac McClung sticks somewhere if he ends up in the Warriors G League system with the Santa Cruz Warriors or ends up on a two way. I would be impressed because I would just, you know, love to see him come up every now and then and get a shot at garbage time because. He seems to work hard and, you know, he has a flair. He has a flair for the game. He just needs to be able to keep playing defense and run the point, you know, run the point well, because that's who he has to be in the, in the NBA. He may stick, he may not, but hopefully he sticks somewhere else down the road. There's a couple more, a few more Warriors G League games, uh, sorry, Summer League games. And I hope Wiseman plays at least one or two more times maybe we'll see how he feels after this one but i would love just to to see him get another go at it and you know see him build on some of these positives and 
you know, take some of these negatives like rebounding, fouling, and try to work on those as well. So, yeah, all things looking good. I'll be honest, I was really excited for the Summer League game. This was the most excited I've been since the first Summer League game with Kaminga and Moody last season. And Justinian Jessup, who we were all hyped on last year. But, you know, uh, that ship has sailed, even though he's on the Summer League team again this year. But James Wiseman, the rest of the league, if he is healthy, uh, that's going to be a very, 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 very dangerous weapon for Steph, for Draymond, for Clay, for anyone else to just throw the ball up there. You know, like imagine all the stuff Looney did. But imagine instead of the Warriors like dumping pocket passes to Looney and during the regular season, fumble or fall to the ground, instead having the ball go up in the air and have no one else be able to get to it except for James Wiseman and him throwing it down. So, yeah, this is what I was hoping for. And for all you Warriors fans listening, a very, very auspicious start. And uh, you should be very excited as long as he stays healthy and that right knee is good to go. Anyway, that's another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick E. Pino or at Oakland Warriors. Check us out at OaklandWarriors.com and be sure to tell your fellow Warrior fan friends to tune in and listen. The Oakland Warriors podcast is produced by National Film Society and is a part of the Basketball Podcast Network. And if you are so inclined, please do leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and or Spotify and leave us a nice review on Apple Podcasts. That always helps and is much appreciated. Also check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Oakland Warriors, where you can also watch this podcast episode if you care to watch me talk (laughs) straight into a camera or my computer screen, whatever. Anyway, that's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time.